we are working on Ethereum scalability and blockchain scalability generally is this big hairy thing that everyone loves to talk about um, and everyone thinks they know about and everyone has a lot of opinions about. And at the dawn of time, the first ever response to the Bitcoin white paper was about scalability. In 2017, when we had this ICO boom, CryptoKitties, which most of you probably know about, uh, got really popular. But it was really hairy because sometimes the fee to buy the kitty cost more than the kitty itself. And people at CryptoKitties had to manually do this sort of like volatile fee pricing to make it easier for people to buy CryptoKitties and interact with the application. Right now, I think the Ethereum network utilization is something like 90%. And these performance bottlenecks aren't going to go away, and they're a massive barrier to adoption. Fees are also really expensive, and I think it would be a little bit better if fees were reliably expensive, but they're not. Some days, you know, they're a couple cents, and other days, they're over a dollar. While we were at Plasma Group, we thought that transactions per second was the solution to you know, blockchain scalability woes. And so we worked on Plasma and we, you know, ground day in and day out to figure out how to scale TPS. Uh, Plasma is great because, you know, it scales TPS absurdly high, um, theoretically infinite. But <laughs> once we released our Plasma testnet, nobody used it. And um, that was a bit of a wake up call for us because if all of Twitter is saying that transactions per second is what they want, then how come no one is using it now that there's a solution? So it wasn't really um, a solution. It was sort of a delusion. TPS is a really poor measurement for scalability, and there's so much that goes into scalability. The end goal isn't scalability. The end goal is usability, and scalability is a path to get there. So we did some user testing and we figured out that it's not just, you know, massive throughput that people want. It's reliability um, and speed and importantly, functionality. If you're scaling Ethereum, why are you just scaling smart contracts? Why, I mean, why are you just scaling transactions? Why are you not also scaling smart contracts? Um, I think that was maybe obvious in hindsight, but revelatory to us at the time. And reliability. Um, People want to be able to use an application with the same, you know, experience and guarantee as you would see in a Web2 application. And so we really wanted to bring that Web2 user experience into Web3 because then you get, you know, the fantastic UX that you've already been spoiled with, but you also get this really awesome Web3 security. So under the hood, um, we wanted to guarantee first uh, instant transactions or at least instant confirmations um, and really low fees. On ETH1 today, we don't scale transactions massively. It is a 10 to 100x you know, improvement on ETH1 depending on the type of transaction or um, computation that you're doing. But it is really cool because we do support arbitrary Ethereum smart contracts. Um, right, so uh, optimistic Ethereum is really a combination of optimistic rollup, which is a layer two scaling solution that scales Ethereum by doing transactions or computation or what have you off chain, and then the optimistic virtual machine. And so if you think of optimistic rollup as this sort of robot that can do things way faster than a human can, um, the OVM is what allows this robot to be smarter and do a wider range of activities. So you can have optimistic rollup without the OVM. You can scale simple transactions really easily, but you don't get the full functionality of Ethereum, which is, you know, that's what we're all here for. Um, there's a few benefits of staying really close to the architecture. You can think of the OVM as basically the op basically the EVM. It can do anything the EVM can do. 
what we really wanted to do is preserve the Ethereum developer experience. People have for years been building out, you know, tooling for Ethereum, uh, you know, tutorials, developer guides, documentation, um, wallets, things like the graph. We wanted to be able to preserve all of that. So the experience of developing on the OVM is basically what you get on the EVM. You still write in Solidity or Viper. You can still use Truffle, Waffle, um, MetaMask works. It's all generally the same. There might be a few small caveats, like maybe you have to think about, you know, making your function calls a slightly different way um, because of how optimistic rollup scales. Oh yeah, super bullish statistic. Um, optimistic rollup uses data availability to scale and ETH2 phase one scales the data availability layer. And so a lot of people are really concerned with the composability of DeFi applications um, once we move to ETH2. And the beauty of this is that if you are on optimistic rollup uh, and optimistic rollup is on ETH2, not only do you preserve the existing composability and interoperability that you see, this money Lego thing that everyone's super hype about, but you also get 100,000 transactions per second. Um, that's from some Vitalik presentation in Hong Kong. I'll find the link so it doesn't look like I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass. Um, and I want to show you guys a demo we've done with synthetics of um, the OVM but uh, I don't know how to internet. Okay, here we go. So first here's Synthetics Exchange on mainnet Ethereum. And um, I did a demo transaction just to see that it, uh, that it would work um, over an hour ago, you can see here. And the status of the transaction is that it's still pending. So um, I was gonna do another transaction now, but I think, okay, so the transaction's been pending for an hour. And let's go take a look at Synthetics Exchange on L2. Okay, what should I buy? Hey, Kevin, what should I buy? ETH. ETH. Okay, I'm going to uh, put all my money into ETH. Long ETH, confirm trade, boom, confirmed 145 milliseconds. Yo, super bullish, right? Okay, so this is, uh, these are sort of the um, general like confirmation times we expect to see on layer one as well, or sorry, on mainnet as well. Although the code is um, unoptimized, we don't really expect to see that much more significant improvement over we have here. Um, it's a really cool demo, l2.synthetics.exchange. Um, it's a collaboration with Synthetics. They've been super awesome about this through this whole process. They had a few problems. One really big problem they had was people front running their oracles. It's really expensive to do Oracle updates on Ethereum. So they were doing them maybe every five to 15 minutes um, and spending the tens of thousands of dollars per year on Oracle updates alone. And so for approximately the same cost on optimistic rollup, you can be doing those Oracle updates once or twice per second, uh, which is pretty cool. And you can see it all in action for yourself um, on the demo. You can see the um, price updating with, uh, well, hopefully the number one rule of demos is that everything you need to have working will not work when you're demoing live, but there it is. Price updating with, well, maybe not, but you get the idea. There we go, 2320. So this is, um, you know, the crux of what we're building. Next steps would be to combine optimistic rollup and OVM. So this demo is just the OVM. Um, we built out a demo of optimistic rollup at DevCon last year with Uniswap. Um, some of you guys may have played around with that demo. It was unipig.exchange. And so in this demo, the 
OVM part was completely custom code. Uh, none of it was repurposable for any other applications. It was written just for Uniswap. And the sort of milestone that we've hit with the synthetics demo is that um, what we've written is a fully general OVM that can support arbitrary Ethereum smart contracts, theoretically. The caveat is that um, we have to continue debugging our software. <laughs> so it works for synthetics. Um, and we were able to get the graph working quite easily. Uh, we didn't have to make any changes to the synthetic smart contracts. We didn't have to make any changes to the graph. What we're basically doing with the OVM and these you know, Ethereum applications is that we're pretending to be Ethereum. And we're pointing, we're swapping out the Web3 provider and pointing it to us instead. Um, and so the graph you know, thinks we're Ethereum uh, and can still on L2 display the, um, oh no, I lost my window. Display the synthetics price charts. Um, we also, you know, surprisingly managed to get MetaMask working. Um, and it's also quite easy to get um, block explorers working. Um, these are, you know, all guarantees of staying really close to the base layer in terms of architecture. So next uh, for us, we have some refactoring to do with our transpiler. We wanna to continue to find apps and uh, get in touch with developers who want to build their applications um, in a scalable way. We wanna hear about your pain points and we wanna know about what you're building. So hit us up. You can go to um, optimism.io. If you have questions, you can join our Discord. And um, if you wanna ship post, you can also join our Discord. So, oh yeah, uh, Synthetics is hosting a trading competition. There's like 40,000 USD worth of SNX up for grabs. Um, I happen to be dead last on the leaderboard, but uh, you can you know, participate and lose money or win money faster than ever at top speed. So <laughs> thanks for joining everyone. <laughs>